All right. Now, let's get into today. We want to mention, uh, we were talking about same-sex marriage and the Defense of Marriage Act and how that got overturned by those two cases. Something we mentioned last chapter, we're not going to talk about again, is the Privileges and Immunities Clause, so don't sweat that now. Uh, you can go back and check that out on your own. Something we have not mentioned are interstate compacts. Okay? Interstate compacts. Right? These are simply agreements between states. It's an agreement between two or more states. When states have an issue with one another and they want to resolve it without having to go to the courts, they can form an interstate compact. Okay? And to give you a good example, the best example I can think of is something called the New York-New Jersey Port Authority. Anybody ever been to New York City? Yeah, a couple people. Uh, how many tunnels do you go through? A lot. Tunnels, there are, how many bridges are there? A lot more. And if you notice on this little map, the dark blue area is New York and the light blue is New Jersey. There are tunnels and bridges going across back and forth the different parts of New York City to New Jersey. Now here's a question. Uh, they take it to New York to New Jersey. Who pays for it? New York or New Jersey? If you're in New Jersey, why do you want New York to pay for it? Because you don't want to pay for it, and who has more resources? New York does. And if New York, if you look at New Jersey, and you're like, hey, you guys benefit from us being the most important city in the world, and you're right next to us. And so to get past this dispute, they formed an interstate compact where they said, we'll form a group, an entity called the New York-New Jersey Port Authority, and we both contribute to it, and we both share in the responsibilities of creating and maintaining and updating roads, bridges, and uh, sea traffic, water traffic that goes back and forth. All right? Even policing. The Port Authority is responsible for policing all that as well. Right? And it was formed through an interstate compact, an agreement between the states. So you know, they said, look, let's not risk taking this to court, spending lots of time and money and potentially losing, when we can just make an agreement ourselves and get over it. Okay? It's like if Mia is thinking about punching someone in the class in the face, and I have to, I'm like, do I have to get involved here? And you guys are like, no, 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 we got this on our own. I'm like, good, because that's a lot of paperwork. Right? And I hate filling out paperwork. Okay? Those are interstate compacts. If West Virginia had a dispute with Kentucky uh, or Ohio about an issue, instead of taking it to court, uh, one of the things that we could do is just form an interstate compact. All right, now let's move on to federal grants. Ooh, everybody loves grants. Okay, uh, what's a grant? Money that you don't have to pay back. Money you do not have to pay back, and everybody loves a grant. Okay, here's a hundred, kid. You're like, ah, thanks. Okay? Grants. Federal grants. Money the government gives that you don't have to pay back. Right? And here's the thing about federal grants. Uh, we give out, our national government gives out hundreds of billions of dollars in grants every year. Right? And look, the trend is going up. Okay? And that's even adjusted for inflation. Now, this year, I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood north of $600 billion for grants given out to the states. National government says, states, here's some money, and here's what we want you to do with it. Right? So we're giving out $600 billion in grant money every single year. That's a lot of change. It would be fun if the federal government just gave it out in pennies. That would have been awkward. Right? Now, why does the federal government give out grant money to states? Why would they do that? Is it just because they're nice? Not a bad guess, but no. Why would they do that? What's the point? All right, one reason, and that's a very cynical view, but it's very true. Uh, we've identified a good reason here. It's a means of control, okay? The same way that how many of you all, your parents, have held it over your head at some point that they pay for stuff? And look, they're terribly effective at that little guilt trip. Or parents sometimes, too, will be like, not as long as you're living under my roof. Right? They set the rules. All right? Because they're the ones providing the money. Oh, parents, they ruin everything. All right? The federal government does this as a means of control. 
They're like, hey, we think these policies need to get done. And you know what, states? Here's the money, but eh, you're going to uh, you're gonna have to do a little dance in order to get it. Okay? So it's a means of control. Second reason they give out grant money. Okay? What do we know about the different states and the economic situation, like, say, in West Virginia versus Texas? Which one is economically more successful? Texas, right? Is it fair that Texas has more land and more resources than we do? Seems kind of jacked up, right? Grants, the reason we give out grants is to equalize the resources between larger and smaller states, richer and poorer states. We want to equalize the resources between the two. We want to equalize resources between the states. States like West Virginia, we benefit largely from federal grants because do you think we put as much into federal taxes as Texas does? Nope. They pay way more in federal taxes than we do, but we suck out more resources than they do. And it helps balance it out so that even though we still don't do as well as Texas, it's not as bad. It closes the gap a little bit. Okay? And states like Texas and California are like, oh, West Virginia, you'd be nothing without us. And I'm like, well, technically you got a point. All right? Third reason that the federal government gives out grants. Okay? You ever had an instance where your parents gave you money and said, here, go buy something to eat. Go eat somewhere. Because sometimes my parents used to do that. They're like, eh, you're on your own tonight, kid. Why are they doing that? They don't have to. Why, why not? Why don't they have to? Why, what do they got going on? They have other things to do, okay? And the federal government says, hey, there's all kinds of little policy problems in your state that need to get solved, and we're too busy to do them. So here's some money. Go fix it. I love the federal government. They're just like a parent, okay? It helps the government solve problems, the federal government solve problems that they're too busy to take on. Here's an example. What are they doing right on the interstate by the Barbersville Mall exit? Expanding it three lanes on each side, six lanes total. All right. Is the federal government doing that work? No. But the project's going to cost almost $100 million, and the federal government's paying for like 80% of it. So in a way, they're giving us the money, and we're solving the problem. That's lovely. Check this out, too. Uh, this is where your grant money, federal grant money, tends, up, uh, tends to go. Transportation. Okay, transportation, meaning roads, transportation systems like busing programs. Okay, potentially railroads. Right? States need that money to help. And, like, for example, right now, you've seen, uh, and we talked about this to an extent, too. Are there roads in West Virginia that need updating? Desperately. And we're talking about, we know this in our area, and if in the Huntington Tri-State area there are roads that need upgraded, you better bet, you better believe that rural areas feel the pinch a little bit more than us. And I think, I don't know if it was in here the other day we were talking about it, I hate going up Johns Creek because that road is like, I'm like driving through a minefield. That's the road with the big It's wall. ridiculous. They, they make it work. They yeah, and they, they paved part of it, but uh, uh, there's still parts of it you're like, my gosh, this is ridiculous. Newman's Branch Road, anybody live up there, Newman's Branch? That's terrible, too. All right? Now, also you see here, too, education. A large portion of money, grant money, goes towards education. And we're going to talk about this, man. Let me tell you, we education, we get some grant money, and it is absolutely ridiculous. Housing and community development. A lot of low-income housing there. All right? Now, something else that's relevant about grants, too, check this out. This shows you the proportion or, or what percentage of state funds go to or come from the federal government. Meaning that when we look at West Virginia's budget this year, an average, an average for states is 42% of our budget comes from the national government. Meaning that what happens if the national government cut us off? We'd be in big trouble. Uh, go home and, and ask your parents, you're like, what would happen if we had a 40% reduction in our income for next year? What would that mean for your family? I think for most families, we're talking about major changes, like major lifestyle changes. 
right? If the national government doesn't provide funding to states, what happens to roads? You think they're bad now, what would happen? They wouldn't get fixed at all. Maybe they get paid once every three or four years. Gosh, that's ridiculous. And even when they don't do paving, I know in Huntington they do asphalt patching. When there's a hole, they just fill it and just patch it temporarily until they pave it, right? A lot of our programs, schools, like for example, those MacBooks that you have, uh, take a guess where that money came from. It's not the state of West Virginia, I can promise you that, all right? It came from the federal government, all right? You're like, thanks, Obama, thanks, Trump. And I'd be like, oh, man, I hate those people like this, all right? So ultimately, look, we're dependent. It's almost like a drug dealer. They get you hooked on that money, and now it's like, once you have a program, taking it away is hard because people are accustomed to it. And you're like, well, I have my MacBook. I don't know how I ever survived without it, which they are pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Now, let's talk about types of grants. Okay. There's different types of grants. One is what we call a categorical or formula grant. A categorical or formula grant. These are grants with very specific policy ideas in mind. It has to be for a very specific policy. Okay? It has to be for a very specific policy, and there's usually conditions attached to taking the money. So, for example, the federal government might say specifically, hey, we're going to give you $10 million for highway funding, but it has to be used on interstate highways and you have to use it by the end of the year, all right? And that sounds all well and good, but what happens if we just paved our interstates like five months ago? Pave them again. Pave them again? Isn't that kind of wasteful, Kaiser? Now, that's a fun fact there. Uh, we, what we would do if that was the case, we would take the money anyway, because you're like, why not? It's not our money, and you take the money, okay? But that's wasteful. And wasteful spending happens a lot, right? Plus, what does it not let states do? Let me, let me phrase this in a different way. Imagine that your parents were going to give you uh, money to take care of your dinner for tonight. And instead of, uh, instead of giving you cash, they just gave you a gift card to a restaurant. And it was to the restaurant that you hate the most. Uh, what's a place you hate terribly? Me, I hate Long John Silver. Okay. Look, seafood is terrible in the first place, and Long John Silver, I don't even know if it's seafood. I'm sorry if your parents own stock in it, okay? But I can't stand it, all right? Yeah, I know. Me too, right? All right, so if your parents gave you a gift card to Long John Silver, why does that frustrate you? You're still getting to eat, right? But you don't want to eat there. Do you get any discretion in how uh, or where that money is spent? No, okay? Categorical grants are frustrating for states. Here's another example. You all don't know it, but you eat a federal grant every day. The food. Cabell Midland is in a program, a federal program, that pays for your breakfast and lunch. Okay? It's a specific program. The money can only be used for breakfast and lunch for students. Right? Now, are there conditions attached when you take that money? All right. First of all, what do they tell you when you're going through the line, Kaiser? What do you have to tell you that you take? You have to take. Oh, you have to take, like, one of everything. You have to take a fruit and vegetable. You have to take some type of meat of some kind. You have to take dairy. Because the federal government says, here's what we think kids should eat. And if you're going to take our money, then you have to serve the food the way we want. All right? So what does that lead to students doing a lot? Taking food and throwing it away. Taking food and throwing it away. A lot of wastefulness. All right? And so that's frustrating. However, it's not our money, so no big deal. Okay? Now, it gets better, too. What's restricted about, what can we not add to your food? Sugar. No added sugar. Cause salt. No salt. Look, when they took away salt from school food, like kids here were bringing salt, like contraband salt shakers in the backpack, whipping it out of lunch, and like, you know, y'all got any of that salt? I mean, it's bizarre in a way. Okay? Now, does that seem ridiculous? Absolutely. Also, too, what's an ingredient you have to have, like, if you're going to have any type of bread or pastry? What is it? Whole wheat. 
all right? I love it when whole wheat or whole grain, they try to tell you, they're like, every student deserves a nutritious meal. Look, you can make whole grain out of Pop-Tarts. It's still a Pop-Tart, all right? You can't tell me that Pop-Tarts are nutritious. There are calorie minimums and calorie maximums for every meal. Protein, carbs, they have to meet certain guidelines. Isn't that where they get all the tubes um, and boxes of them each day? Part of the program, yes, part of the program is that you, basically you're taking on responsibility for feeding people. And so now it's like, since you're only here two days a week, we want to make sure that you get uh, the food that you need to take home with you. Now, they'll make like a couple hundred boxes, but what do you think happens? You think everybody takes it? No. What does that lead to again? More wastefulness, right? And that's frustrating on all levels. Here's another example, too. Alaska in like 2007, they took grant money for infrastructure, building bridges, and they built a bridge to an island that had nothing on it. It was a bridge to nowhere, literally, the bridge to nowhere. And they're like, well, nobody really cares because the construction workers are happy because they got something to do. Concrete and steel manufacturers don't care what you're building with it. They're just like, oh, you want 10 tons of steel? Okay, we'll fill that order. Here's another example. Uh, the locks on the doors here at Capitol Midland in 2009-2010, uh, the principal at the time got a federal grant to replace them. All right? uh, and you had to use it. The money had to be used for something for school security for stronger barrier protection, which meant windows or, or doors or walls or whatever you could think of to strengthen, essentially, or make the school more secure. Because, you know, active shooters are a real concern. And so they changed the locks on every single door in this building, interior and exterior. And we spent $50,000 on that. Now, do you think the locksmith who came here and did that job cared about whether or not we needed new locks? No, because he's like, I'm getting paid to replace the locks. Fun fact, do you think we needed new locks? No. No. That's the best part of it. Uh, we didn't need them. But somebody had to take the money, right? Why didn't they do something else with the stuff? I, you know what? I guess they couldn't think of anything else at the time that we really needed. Okay. Tinted windows, right? Tinted windows. I, like I know. We'll be riding around in style. All right? So look, categorical grants oftentimes lead to a lot of wasteful spending. And do you think states like getting them? No. No, probably not. States prefer our other type, what we call block grants. Okay? Block grants have a very broad purpose and few conditions. It's exactly the opposite of a categorical. They'll say something in particular like, okay, uh, here is a $10 million education grant. And states are like, well, what in education do we use it for? And they're like, hmm, nothing in particular, whatever you think your state needs. Okay? And maybe you think your state needs more teachers. Maybe you think your state needs, I don't know, laptops. Maybe you think your, your schools need uh, new textbooks. Whatever it is you think your school needs, we'll let you use that appropriately, as long as it's related to education. There's a lot of flexibility with that. And that gives states the discretion that they want. All right? Now, there's danger in that, too. And I love it because working here, it's like you get all kinds of stupid money spending stories. Uh, in 2009, you all remember, do you all know what a netbook was? Before tablets became a thing, they wanted to try to shrink down laptops. So imagine a laptop that's only like, you know, seven or eight inches wide and like four or five inches uh, the other direction. So uh, it was a really small portable laptop that you could fit like in, in almost any bag, okay? And they got a technology grant, technology and education grant from the federal government. So the state of West Virginia divided it up among all 55 counties. And Cabell County... Uh, they decided to buy all their middle and high school teachers one of these little netbooks. All right? Take a guess who they never bothered to ask what we should do with that money. Never bothered asking teachers. Now, here's the thing. In my class, I've legitimately never gone without at least having two computers in the room. I've got my laptop. I've always got the desktop over there. And to be honest with you, in the past, I used to have my own personal laptop, but I don't need it anymore. Look, I've got an iPad over here, too. Right? Uh, do you know that, here's the funny thing, Keppel County, they're better at it now because they put barcodes on everything. But in the past, do you know how they kept track of like who had what iPads or computers? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I have two older generation iPads that 
at home that have turned into giant doorstops. They don't even know that I had them. And no, they never told me what to do with them. I asked one time, and they were like, eh, don't do anything with it. Yeah, it was. I felt a little awkward. I'm like, whatever. All right? Yeah, strange times. Strange times. So anyway, block grants, categorical grants. One gives the state more discretion. One, the federal government says, here's what we think you need to do with it. Instead of getting a gift card to a restaurant, a block grant is like getting what? Straight cash, homie. And you're like, yes. Because you're like, I don't want my parents to do that. Look, uh, Armstrong, you're like, give me cash because not only can I go to Taco Bell and buy food really cheaply, but then I can take the rest of the money and go buy a latte at Starbucks. You're like, yeah, think about it. All right? And look, if there's one thing high school and college kids love, it's cheap food. Fun fact, too, if you ever need to get people to come to an event, feed them. Buy pizzas and buy from the cheapest place, not the best place. There's your word of advice for the day. All right? Now, states will either get a categorical grant or a block grant. Okay? But that's not the only thing that the federal government offers. They also offer project grants. Okay? Project grants. Project grants are when the government invests in ideas. Think of like Shark Tank except for the government is like bankrolling it, okay? Uh, hey, Connor, tell me something. If you were going to fix something like a world problem, what would be something that you'd want to fix? Homelessness. homelessness. That's a great example, okay? And what if you had a really good idea for solving a homeless problem, let's say in the city of Huntington, and you tell the government, the federal government, you're like, look, let me run an experiment in the city of Huntington for dealing with homelessness, and all I need is $100,000, okay? And the federal government likes your idea and decides to give it a shot. And they're like, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but we can give people a shot. Hey, Tama, what do you want to do when you grow up? You don't know? Biomedical engineer. Biomedical engineer. You want to do research, right? What would be some disease you'd like to cure? What is it? Cancer, Cancer. all right? And what if you have a really good idea, and it's kind of risky, but it still might work, and you tell the government, I need $2 million for research. They might take a look at your idea, and they'd have scientists review your proposal, and you can get money for that. All right? Now, they let you pitch proposals, but also the government, too, lists projects that they want people to take on. So, for example, maybe there's a biomedical engineering project about gene therapy and how to repair somebody's genes or make sure they don't pass on genetic diseases. And Tama's like, you know, that's not really my number one interest area, but I'll apply for that grant because maybe I can help people. All right? These are programs that the government has a vested interest in figuring out. And the government says, look, we don't have all the answers, but what we will do is offer money to somebody who can come up with an answer. And so, you know, maybe uh, Connor's homeless experiment works. Maybe it doesn't. Okay? But the issue is, is that we find ways to solve problems. A lot of times, like when you see, uh, you know, research at universities going on, a lot of it's funded through grants, okay? And that's what they're expected to do, come up with grant money, all right? Tomorrow, what we'll do is we're going to look at a, uh, a project, a uh, list of project grants out there and show you what's available. One other thing, too, that's apply, uh, applicable to you all, uh, Pell Grants. You all know what Pell Grants are. Pell Grants are available for college education if you fall below a certain income level. All right? Does the federal government have an interest in helping people get educated? Yes. yes. Not just because education is good, but what are they trying to do for people who grow up in a low-income environment? Get them out of that. Give them an opportunity to get out of poverty. All right? We'll talk more about that manana.